You have asked me how do I get the turbine up or how do I get it down uh, on this mast. Uh, so I'm going to do a really quick video on that and then I'm going to show you all the components and uh, where and how and why I got them all. Uh, right off the bat you'll notice that uh, I'm not using my telescopic ladder, I'm just using the uh, house uh, ladder. That's uh, simply because I'm too lazy to unpack it uh, as I am uh, moving tomorrow morning. So uh, it was easier just to use the house, uh, the house ladder and uh, put some gloves on it so that it doesn't scratch the side of the RV. So first things first, uh, let's get the flag down. The uh, turbine is obviously down, and now I'm going to take you off this tripod and bring you over. So, uh, the parts that I'm using, first of all, the tripod, uh, used to be used uh, by uh, workers, I'm guessing. Uh, they had uh, LED lights, and the LED lights didn't work anymore, so they threw the tripod and the LED lights out. and. Uh, out of the dump. I saw a tripod and I saw potential so there you have it. I had to bend these and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, this uh, pole is a fiberglass uh, 13 foot pole uh, that was used on a surfboard and uh, somebody threw out the surfboard and they threw out the sail and obviously the mast so I grabbed the mast I figured it was light and strong, so that's what uh, that's where that also from the dump. Uh, these are just pieces of foam that I use to uh, insulate the vibration uh, because when it's mounted up on my uh, awning bracket here, uh, it does vibrate when it starts to work uh, when it's connected to the battery. Uh, and then making a hole in here to run the cable. Uh, was tricky because I had to get uh, this uh, connector through and uh, so yeah uh, persistence paid off and I was able to get that done um, the invert the uh, con controller is inside there I'll show you that some other time um, so back to the turbine the turbine is made by Tycon power it is a 400 watt um, what would you say, uh, just a regular magnet, no brushes uh, kind of uh, turbine. Uh, they still make them at uh, tyconpower.com. Um, I got this on Kijiji, 
uh, Craigslist type thing uh, for a few hundred dollars. Uh, it is an effective 250 watts, so you don't get the full uh, the full 400 watts as it's uh, rated for. Uh, the winds that you need, a uh, little more, a little bit more than a than a breeze, will will get it going. And uh, as far as uh, the performance uh, goes, I have yet to put an ammeter on it to actually see if uh, how much power it's producing or how much amperage and uh, how windy it needs to be and all that. So, so roughly, um, that's the setup. Uh, when I go to install it, uh, I do it all in reverse. Uh, finally, the pivot point here. Um, this you may recognize as a an office chair wheel uh, that I took the wheel off and I kept the, uh, the center part, the, the axle, and then I just used a, a pin that I can unscrew easily with a wing nut uh, that goes through my uh, awning mast again. Um, I did have to drill a hole on this side. Uh, but uh, other, other than that, it doesn't hurt the uh, the brackets or the uh, mast or the anything to do with the awning. Uh, so far, I've had uh, no problems with that, no problems with the mast, um, and no problem with the turbine. Uh, however, when it's not plugged into a uh, to a battery, uh, the automatic brake will come on, so it'll spin up real fast. And then it'll stop, which kind of torques the, the mast a little bit. Uh, but uh, I can show you inside in a few seconds uh, where the connections are being made uh, inside here. I'll show you that uh, in a second and you'll see that I've actually put an insert, a metallic uh, post insert in there so that the torque is that is felt up here is, um, how should I say, not torquing the fiberglass but torquing the metal that's going all the way down. So let me put this on pause and I'll show you that. So my mistake, uh, before I can do that, I have to show you how to take the blades off. Uh, this is just a plastic cover, it just clips on, so just by lifting a few of these uh, sides it uh, comes off. Just like, mm, giving me a hard time with one hand today. So as you can see there's a cotter pin here and it's uh, slotted so you can put a screwdriver in there to hold it in place uh, while you unscrew the uh, the nut that's inside the blades and to do that you have to spin the blades um, and while that is happening if these uh, guys here were fully up like they used to be well you couldn't you can't spin the turbine uh, you can't spin the blades so that's why they uh, they got bent and so uh, just let me get this uh, blade off uh, and I'll show you the rest. Okay, so I took the cutter pin off and now I'm just going to splint the blades. I'm not sure where the camera is pointing right now, so you can see the nut is coming up. Whoop! Yes, I did smack myself in the face at one point. So I'm just going to check to see. Nope, a little bit more. There we go, it looks, uh, yeah, there we go. That comes off, and this also comes up. All right, and there you have the turbine. So I didn't have a lot of room to, uh, to put the blades, they're fiberglass, and they're fairly fragile. So what I did is I installed one of these on the other side and tied this rope to it, and then made a loop. And I left this part so that I can pull it really taut and bring the loop up or down depending on if I'm taking the uh, the blades out or if I'm leaving them in. Now some of you will recognize these. Uh, sometimes when you put furniture together like tables, uh, uh, legs on a table, uh, uh, stuff like that, it's got a nut uh, already inside the furniture. Well when you take that nut out, this is what it looks like. So I'm using it as a spacer, and also because it's very strong and screwed into to the wall here, uh, to the ceiling uh, part, it also has these nice cutting grooves that cut into the wood uh, that I'm using to keep the rope from sliding down during transport. And it keeps the, uh, the turbine uh, blades uh, nice and safe up there. Nothing's going to crush it or bang it or 
and it's got a little bit of movement if, if something does knock it. So that go, that's for the blades. Okay, so now uh, you're at this part, and uh, just a matter of removing this uh, nut and bolt that go inside, uh, I guess, the, uh, the leg, if you will. You're going to pull this out, and of course uh, the wire at the other end has to go through that little slot and allow, the, allow me to pull all this forward. So as you can see, it's a uh, Anderson connectors. Oh, just kicked the camera. Wonder if that was uh, good enough for you guys to see what I was talking about. I guess so. All right, so that's it for the removal. And lastly, I'll show you uh, what it looks like on the roof. So here we are on the roof. I'm not sure you can see over there. I have just a, a piece of tape that I've stuck to the roof and then I just slide the, uh, the tip of the pole uh, <laughs> uh, underneath that. Um, now at this end, um, I have uh, screwed in a piece of strap with a buckle and a piece of Velcro. And that matches to this piece of Velcro on the pole so that the pole sticks on there. Oops. Sorry, sticks on there, doesn't move forward or backwards. Uh, then I run the little strap here that uh, came with the connector. I just run it like that so the wire doesn't move uh, back and forth inside the uh, inside the pole as I'm traveling. And then I just buckle it together. Now, of course, it's hard to do with two hands, so it's going to be impossible to do with one. So, ta-da! Um, so some of you will recognize this as being uh, formerly used as a uh, dog uh, collar. Um, so all these parts are, if not available, they're, they can be made available to you uh, through some resources. I don't know what kind of poles that uh, you uh, want to get. It really depends. Um, I'm not sure you can get a good look inside here because of the sun. Um, but there's the metal liner that I put in it. It's about three feet. It's about, it's about a three foot uh, pole that's inside the fiberglass. So I'm hoping the sun is allowing you to see that. So I'm going to show you a few more uh, mods and I'll, we'll, we'll terminate this, uh, this video. Okay, a few mods. Uh, these parts here are just EVA foam, just like those guys over there. Uh, curled up and taped up with some uh, Gorilla Tape, just uh, to act as a vibration insulation. Uh, the bracket that I use to mount it to uh, the, the uh, awning uh, is basically uh, some rubber tubing, a couple of nine uh, long uh, bolts and some uh, butterfly nuts and washers and on the inside here I I slit some of this uh, tubing and I put it on the teeth uh, similar to these teeth here um, so that uh, the fiberglass doesn't get all chewed up uh, because of the vibration or because of the putting it up and putting it down uh, some of you will notice that uh, it's a weird looking output here uh, that's because it's the top of a Pepsi bottle and I filled it with silicone because the ends were getting kind of frayed and I didn't want the vibration or the wires to get uh, messed up because there's no way to get inside there once those are broken. Uh, and you'll notice there's only two wires uh, instead of three. A normal turbine would have three wires because uh, of the three phases of the magnets and the coils. Uh, and it needs a rectifier, three diode rectifier, in order to produce DC. Now, that produces a lot of heat, so what this company did uh, is they, they put the diodes inside the armature of the motor, uh, and that's where the, the cooling fins come in. So, next to that is the little mod that I made, little cradle for it, oops, sorry, a uh, little cradle for it that I made for it just out of uh, insulation foam just uh, from uh, cutting pieces here and there and eventually it just sits in there like so. Um, I, I also have the Allen key 
uh, to take the blades off the uh, the main mount um, just in case one of them breaks or you know if I want to take it apart permanently and this little block of wood is just uh, so that the pole doesn't sit in gravel or dirt uh, or really big rocks or whatever and gets uh, gets the bottom of that chewed up so all in all things are to uh, to protect and try to uh, be able to use it for a longer longest period of time as possible so I believe that covers pretty much everything with the wind turbine uh, except for the results of uh, performance uh, and I'll either post those uh, later on as soon as I get an ammeter uh, which is probably going to be next year um, or that I reach some form of conclusion uh, based on, on battery performance. Uh, right now I'm using three 116 amp carbon foam uh, Firefly batteries. Uh, they're working very well. They're stable at 12.7 volts um, and that's where they like to stay. Uh, I get up in the morning, they're 12.7 um, I go to bed after collecting uh, a bunch of solar uh, during the day um, and they still settle around 12.7 um, so the furnace is going, the fridge is going, lights, uh, the pump when I take a shower so I really can't complain they've been those batteries have been performing uh, well enough um, and these uh, panels are, are, are doing fine as well. They're only producing about uh, two to three amps each, and they're supposed to be rated uh, five amps or almost six. But uh, that's another video. We'll do something else uh, for that. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed uh, the briefing on the turbine, and we'll have something, uh, something good for you next time. All right, see you guys later.